Let's get started. Where's my brush? There's something in my eye. Oh, I dropped my brush. I went too ham. Who goes there? Vision, is that you? Oh my God, I gotta pee. It's game time and I'm up one. Name something I ain't done. Name a body, that's my type. Right. Air Jordan, I'll take flight. I'm next level, I'm French. You are winner, Julia Renee. Love babes and bros, and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Julia Renee, and I'm an IFBB wellness pro. And today we are going to be doing, in today, today we are going to be doing a juicy Q&A and a get ready with me. You guys know that although I love bodybuilding and it's my number one thing, I also really enjoy hair and makeup. And people have been wanting a updated get ready with me and a lot has changed since the last one. I've been doing my makeup a little bit differently and I'm actually enjoying it. Let's get started. First, let me get out all three of my makeup bags, my brush bag, my big makeup bag, and my travel makeup bag. All three I bring with me everywhere. Also, one thing that I always keep with me is black towels. This one's really dirty. I learned this from my mommy actually, and I have it right next to me to wipe off any like extra product and stuff. It's almost like I'm an artiste and this is where I wipe my paint. So I always have one of those. My skin is already clean and washed and ready to go. The thing that I put on it before I put all of my makeup on is the TimeWise Repair Mary Kay and it has SPF 30. And it also gives you kind of like a little good bit of a glow. This is what I like because it's good to have some sunscreen underneath your makeup and this is what it does. My night cream is a little bit different. It's just something that's a little bit more moisturizing because it's cold up in here. Okay, first step. This is the holy grail of all primers. I don't care what anybody says, but it's the Milk Makeup Hydro Primer. This stuff is super sticky. So I do two pumps of that and then I massage it all over my face because if you haven't used primer for your makeup, what are you doing with your life? No wonder your makeup's not staying. But it's literally like a glue, but it doesn't feel like a glue. Like when you put it on your face, it feels a little sticky, but it dries and it feels completely fine. So that's what I use. Next, I am going to get my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I bought a new one of these yesterday. I went makeup shopping yesterday and I bought a bunch of new things that I've been wanting to try. So you guys are gonna get to try these new things with me too, because I always am looking for like the best of like what like foundation and blush and you know, you just gotta, you gotta, you gotta try it out. So I have this color, it's in macadamia. So what I do, is I start, cause I am Italian, so I have just naturally like darker under eye circles, I'm sure you guys can see. So I kind of conceal my problem areas and then like right here, I have a little bit of like discoloration. So I do, y'all are going to watch this and be like, oh, Julia, you're fucking crazy. This is why your makeup stays so well. So there's some So I've been out of the makeup game for quite some time now since I am now a fitness person, but I used to know all of the makeup trends, but now apparently it's like everything is cream. Literally, if you can make a cream out of it and it's for your face, it's cream, like cream foundation, cream highlighter, cream blush, and like I came from the era of matte makeup where like if you looked like a doll, you were doing something right instead of looking like dewy or you just like stepped out of slime or something. So I'm just like relearning how to do makeup in this day and age, like what's in style, you know? And I'm kind of liking it. So this brush that I have right here is the Sephora, it's the 56 brush and it's the, go back, it's the foundation brush. So I just kind of stipple this in everywhere. You guys are gonna see that I'm pretty like rough with my face, but trying to go in a little bit of upwards motion. This is actually the first time I'm using this brush. I haven't used it before. I wonder if I turn this light off, if this will be better. 
I don't know, what do you guys think? Does that look better? I have a like a magnifying mirror that I usually use for my makeup that my mommy got me. As you guys will see, my mommy buys me so many things because my um, love language is gifts. So my mom and I just like consistently are buying each other gifts. So I got like a little bit of layer of the concealer kind of just everywhere. I use this as like a backup. Like if I sweat it off, at least I have this little tiny layer that protects me a little bit. And this is a new foundation that I'm trying. It's the Good Apple Skin Perfecting Foundation Balm by Kat Von D or KVD Beauty. This is what it looks like. I have it in the shade tan. So this is the first time I'm trying it and it's kind of strange. Like I'm used to a pump foundation. Ooh, ooh, so I'm just going like this. So this is what I'm gonna do next. Uh, excuse me, I apologize. But one thing guys, I'm probably never gonna stop burping on this channel, you know? That's just me though. So right now I am going to put it like about here. Whoa, this is interesting. Before I start everything else, I'm gonna get this Mario, Makeup by Mario conceal no this is a contour so i put it right here and here and here and i'm going to like stipple this in and once i do this stuff i'm gonna just kind of i'll show you guys stuff but i'm gonna answer some questions that people had so the first question is actually, do you train abs? If not, is it typical for a wellness competitor to train abs? So I really like this question because I hate training abs. There's two things that I hate training more than anything in this world, and that is calves and abs. And that's why I don't have good calves or abs because whatever you focus on is typically, you know, your strong point, hence why my quads are big because I love training quads. But I started training them more consistently because it's really important to have that development. But when I train them, I train them after cardio. So like the things that I don't like to do like calves and abs i get them completed as soon as i can within my day because i just don't like them so the one thing that i've been focusing on is just more so focusing on sculpting rather than building so if you're wanting to like build really muscular abs you can do it with weight so that can look like cable crunches it could be like those weighted like dippy things that people do. But I don't really wanna put size on mine, I just wanna sculpt them. So I do a lot of body weight stuff. So like leg lifts, I also do like crunches on a medicine ball. I can also make like a little a video of what I like to do for my ab workouts. If you guys want, just let me know down below. Let's see, did I do a good job blending this? Hopefully I like this foundation. It's new, so. So now I'm gonna put a little bit, whoa, by a little bit, I mean a lot. So apparently this foundation is supposed to be more like on the hydrating side, so we'll see. Ooh. So I'm gonna finish this and then I'll get back with you guys. Okay, Woo! now that we have that blended in, I'm going to put a little bit more concealer on top right here and right here. Okay, now I'm going to contour my nose. So I still have the Makeup by Mario and I have this little brush. This one I think is from Ulta. Yeah, but it's like really fine. So I kind of go in like this. so funny because I look super pale right now, but like, trust me, I'm not. Okay, let's turn this light off. A little bit better. But as you can see, I have this little like shape drawn on my nose that's like almost 
creating like a little button nose, you know, which is something I definitely do not have. But now I'm gonna use this thicker brush to just blend it all out. Now that I have my nostrils done, I'm gonna set it with this Fenty bronzer in Island Ting. And I'm just going to like pat that in around the same shape that I just made. And this is your reminder to subscribe. Ooh, ooh, question number two. Let me just wipe my tears really quickly. Question number two, what size waist trainer do you wear? So guys, <gasps> there's something on my camera. I would like to tell you and announce that officially I have moved into a size extra small for my waist trainer, which is a pretty big deal because I started this prep using my size medium and now we're on a size small, extra small. Okay, next, I'm all confused now. Next, this is a new product that I'm excited, super excited to, don't you hate it when the ice moves in the fridge? It scares the bejesus out of me. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish. So this is supposed to be like a setting powder. So I'm going to use this under my eyes and then almost like a, oh, I forgot blush, what? This is my favorite blush, guys. So this is Melt, and it is a cream blush, and it's in the color Sandy Cheeks. You guys know I like me some corals. So I'm going to get a little bit of that. This one is super, ooh, that's a lot. Super malleable. Just like the foundation that I just used, it is very movable. Like very, very creamy, easy to, get on, so I'm gonna put some of this on. Okay, now that I have the blush on, sorry, I keep turning this light on and it's distracting. Ooh. I'm going to set my under eyeballs with the Charlotte Tilbury setting powder. I had this really awesome brush and like I have no idea where it went, so I'm just gonna use this giant random brush and kind of set the under eye. We're still trying to you know, keep it a little bit more on the creamy side, but also like, we need this stuff to stay. Can't just be slipping around everywhere. stuff is so good. Now that I got my under eyes and I kind of contoured right here, I'm gonna get a little bit of this powder and just use it to set the tip of my nose and the bridge of my nose and kind of bring it up here. Question number three. How do you deal with weight gain when building muscle or maintaining? I'm not gonna lie guys, this is, this is a challenging thing. Especially for like a bodybuilder because we get so lean and you know, you've never seen your body get like that before. And it can be really hard to see your body go back to a healthy and realistic weight. Like even right now, I can start to see that my body is changing so much. And once I start gaining a little bit of weight back, like it's going to be weird because imagine seeing your body one way and then all of a sudden, oh! I dropped my brush and went to ham. And then all of a sudden, you just don't see it that way anymore. It's like, imagine getting like breast implants or something. And one morning, like you just have regular boobs, you know, and then the next you have this new thing, like this new object in your body. It's kind of the same as like gaining weight. Like you get used to seeing your body a certain way. So it's kind of like a shock. But the way that I've dealt with this, you know, I haven't dealt with it that really well, in the past, I've shared with you guys, you know, it's it's hard and there's a lot of body dysmorphia that starts to happen because you just aren't equipped with how to handle it. And I think that bodybuilders need to be more aware that this is something that could happen and it happens to a lot. 
and just be better prepared with yourself. And the thing that I do is like, the one thing that I start to recognize is I need to be putting on body fat because it is not healthy for me to be that lean, nor is it sustainable. So that thought alone lets me move past the, I need to be looking like this because this is where I'm comfortable or whatever. And I start moving into a more health standpoint which is, in my opinion, way better than always focusing on how you're looking. You know, start thinking about, okay, this is what's healthy for me, but I'm not gonna lie, guys, like, it's, it's hard. But one thing that I would do is I would stop checking the scale, I would stop obsessing about what I looked like in the mirror, because I noticed that that's what I was doing, and it wasn't helping me. So if you can avoid doing those at all costs to just be better for your, mental health then please go for it and then there'll come a day where you'll be able to like look in the mirror and you won't say mean things to yourself or pick yourself apart because i want that for everybody i want you to be able to look in the mirror and be like wow like i love the person that's looking back from me and i think i'm kind of going on a tangent here but people just expect you to all of a sudden just love yourself and love your body when this is kind of a process if you've spent your whole life just downing yourself and downing your body, it's kind of hard to build up that muscle memory to do so, you know? I think that's why I am a fan of like body neutrality instead of body positivity. And let me kind of like explain the difference between the two. I feel like body positivity is like loving your body no matter what, but I don't know about you guys, but there's times where I don't love my body, especially when I was going through a lot of binge eating problems and I was gaining a bunch of weight. And it's hard for someone to just tell you like, just love your body, come on. And you're like, what are you talking about, bro? Like it's, it's a lot harder than that. But if you can just be more so neutral about your body and be like, you know, this is what it is for right now, instead of being hateful towards it, I feel like there's a lot of healing that goes into that. And then maybe in the future, you'll be able to love your body more with practice, you know? I like to use grounding statements and talking to myself in the mirror because that builds up the habit of eventually loving your body instead of forcing yourself to love your body even though you might not. And it's okay, I think people avoid feeling bad altogether, but feeling sad and upset is just a part of the human experience. You can't avoid that forever because suffering forces you to grow. All right, we went a little deep there. Moving on to question number four. Can you please give us your tanning routine? So, I am in the bathroom, so I might as well just show you. Let's see. So, this is my favorite tanning. It's the Loving Tan Ultra Dark Deluxe Mousse, and it comes with the mitt. You definitely need the mitt. So, this is what I use. And I also like to go to the tanning bed occasionally, but I don't tell people that the majority of the time because everyone always gives me shit about it. You know, whatever. I'm gonna do my life and you do your life. You do what you want. Yeah, that's what I do. If I'm feeling like I need a little bit of like a faster glow or something, then I'll do the Loving Tan mousse. And if I just want something that's a little bit like more long-term, like keeping up maintenance, then I'll go and do the tanning bed. Oh my God, I gotta pee. Okay, now that I have everything set, I'm gonna put my lip gloss on. This is the lip gloss I use. Lip, face, lip face, Too Faced lip injection. They have these in a bunch of different colors. I used to use the orange one, cause you know I like orange. But I put this on right now so that they can it can start working because it literally like tingles and gives your lips some plump. And then I'll decide like what kind of mood I'm feeling, like what color I want to go on top of it. So we set everything, everything's blended. Now I'm gonna put some highlighter on. I have two different highlighters that I use. So I use a eyeshadow actually from the Modern Renaissance palette from Anastasia. And it's this color right here, which I like, which is more gold. So I'm gonna use that one. But if not, this is a ColourPop one. It's okay, it's definitely not my favorite. I like highlighter that's like really pigment pigmented, but there is one that I'm going to order that's by this brand, which is, oh my God, so Zach is away and it's just me. Who goes there? Vision, is that you? 
So everything is scaring me and it's like the middle of the day and I'm like, no. Okay, it's just my boys. Anyways, this one, it's this brand, but he makes a really good gold. And you guys, I like gold, I like warm colors. I'm not gonna use the ColourPop one right now, I'm just gonna use this one. But the one that I really want is the Mario one. So I'm gonna put a little bit on the tip of my nose. I do a tiny bit on the bridge and then kind of like blend it up. Blend it up a little bit down here. And then I use this brush. It's like a little bit more fluffy. I don't know where I got this brush, but just look for this kind. I'm sure they have them everywhere. I need a new one because literally my thing is it's broken. So I put this everywhere. Put it on the corners of my eyes. Just blend it out. Boo, boo. Uh, uh, uh. Goldie, goldie, goldie. I'm gonna set some here. Blend. Okay, next we're gonna do some eyeshadow. So this is a Morphe palette and it's 15D, and this is what it looks like inside. It's all these pretty warm colors. You know I like some warm colors. I have only like a couple different palettes, so I'm just gonna do my eyeshadow. The next question is, how do you cope with having a meal that's not on your meal plan? And I think that is really a good question. So I'm using the color Forever, do, 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 right here, and I'm just gonna put that everywhere. So let me tell you what I used to do and let me tell you what I do now. I used to freak out and try to fix it as if like eating off of plan made me bad or I was doing something terribly wrong, which is definitely sometimes what you can feel like. You know, you're just groom yourself to feel that way, which is not true. So I used to feel the need to either go and like work out and burn it off or I would just starve the next day and not eat because I felt bad. I felt like I did something wrong. And what that just did is it made this unhealthy pattern of thinking there was a correlation between eating bad and having to cancel it out with not eating or excessively working out, which is just a terrible pattern to be in. So now if I do, the thing that I do is I'll just, if I eat off plan, I wake up the next day, I don't, do excessive amounts of cardio. I just go right back to my regularly scheduled program, as I should say. And I definitely encourage you guys to try this if it's something that you want to do. If you do feel like you have shame and guilt for eating something the next day. So just wake up, go to your regularly scheduled program and that's it. Like that's, that's really it. And as far as like dealing with the guilt and the shame behind it, you know, that's just a lot of kind of inner work that you need to be doing, you know, remind yourself like it is okay. I don't need to be perfect. Nobody is perfect. People are supposed to eat off plan. You're not supposed to be on plan all the time because expecting 100% perfection out of yourself only ends up leaving you feeling terrible because your expectations are at 100%. When you don't meet that, it's ridiculous. So just try and be a little bit more kinder to yourself when that does happen. And knowing that, girl, it's okay. We're human. We're not supposed to be freaking robots. And I struggle with that a lot because I always think that I need to be perfect with everything that I do. And that's just, stupid because if we were perfect, we would all be really boring. Okay, now we have the top done and I kind of like wing it out a little bit. As you can see, like it goes out a little because it kind of matches the wing that I do. You know, don't mind me just fixing my lashes. So I'm gonna do the same two colors, which is Forever and In The Crease. Forever is a little darker and I put it on the edges and the color In The Crease is more orange. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of the darker one under here. And then I'm gonna grab the Charlotte Tilbury, the setting powder that we use, and I'm gonna get a little beauty blender, kind of tap it, and I'm gonna bring it under here so it can sharpen this line. So if there's any excess, I don't do it too crazy. If there's any excess, it just catches it. Now we move into my favorite part, and that's eyes and my brows. I am telling you guys, it is a mess in here. I can't find anything. Everything's just everywhere. Okay, so what I use for my gel is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Freeze. So when you open it, it's literally just like this jelly gel. 
and I get a little Isama brow brush. Yes, I call them Isama brows. Where's my brush? Oh no, I found it. So if you can buy these like on Amazon, I have usually a ton of these little spoolie things. Don't mind that it's dirty, it's because I use it a lot. But um, you can buy these and that's what I use to do this with. So I kind of bend it a little bit and then tap it in and then bring my eyes and my brows to the sky. This is a new thing that I've been doing, guys. It's new to me because everybody be like gelling themselves lately. So I wanted to be a part of the 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 gant the 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 the. the, the Oh my God, words. I wanted to be cool. You know, I just want to be cool like the cool kids. So this is what it looks like. I just bring them up to the air. <laughs> okay, now that I have my eyes and my brows like up to the sky, I kind of like sculpt them. So I keep this part up right here and then bring this part a little bit more down because I'm going to start filling them now. And my favorite dip brow is the Kat Von D. This is in medium brown. It's the little pomade for your eyebrows. So I got a new one yesterday because I used it all and then I have like a little pointy brush. And it's dirty, so let me just clean it real quick. If you're that person that keeps your makeup stuff clean all the time, I admire you and I'd like to be your best friend. Now my eyebrows are done. We got them like flickety flicked up a little bit. Remember, they're sisters, not twins. That's why they probably look different. Now are we going to, are we, are we? We're gonna do the infamous eyeliner. This is the NYX Epic Ink Eyeliner. And the next question is, is it possible for a bodybuilder not to win a competition because she has small breasts? That is a really good question, really juicy. Hope that that would never be the case for a competition. I don't think breasts have anything to do with doing well or doing not well, but it's no surprise and it's hard to deny that most women that compete in bodybuilding have fake breasts because when you get that lean, yo boobs, they disappear and you're super shredded and you're very muscular so you lose a little bit of that femininity so that's why a lot of competitors get boobs so that it can help with their shape their silhouette and they can look more feminine while also being shredded that's the reason that i got them they made me feel even more confident and comfortable and it was the best decision that i ever made it enhanced my shape and it just made me look more curvier and for my what's it called division it looked looked really good. But I really would hate to think that someone would get docked for not having them. I don't think that that's a thing that actually happens. I think it's just people prefer to get them and want to get them so that they can feel more feminine. But I really hope that's not the case. Next question is what body fat do you need for a show? And I think that this kind of depends on the person, but each division you need a different body fat percentage. So I would say there's bikini, there's wellness, and there's figure, and then there's women's physique. I would say from bikini is less shredded, wellness is more shredded, figure is more shredded, and women's physique is like the most shredded. So like the higher up and the more muscular category you get, the more shredded that you have to be. If you go onto your site that your competition is actually being hosted by, whichever the league is, you can actually see descriptions of what they expect of you. So they'll have a description of what leanness to look for, like how dry they want you to be. But I would say for my competitions at the level that I'm at, usually about 11 to 12% body fat. And that's really, really low for women. Um, very, very low. Men, it can be anywhere from like three to four to 5%, which is also really low. out should I order my suit won't I be smaller by the time that comes and yes that's very true you will be smaller 
when you get your suit. So just be mindful that you are going to lose body fat. And I would say the best thing that you can do is order like a practice suit, which will really help you not get something that's not your size. And getting a practice suit will be a little bit cheaper than buying the actual suit. So then you can gauge like what size that you're going to be going up into stage. So the closer to the competition, I would say, the better. So have an idea of what you want and everything and what you want your thing to look like and set it up so that whoever you buy it from, like you'll be almost automatically ready to like, okay, I'm putting the order in. If it's someone local, it'll definitely be a lot easier because you'll be able to like go to them and try it on. My lady's local, so I can just go to her and we can adjust it. But I would say at about, let's see, we're about to be eight weeks out right now. So what I'm going to do is first try it on while we're about eight weeks out and we're going to do the sizing and everything, but she's actually not going to complete it until I go and try it on again about four weeks out because four weeks out is where your body starts to change a lot. So that's where about four weeks out you wanna make sure that there's wiggle room in your suit so that when you do get smaller that it's not falling off. So usually with the tops, you can either do like a clasp or you can do something that ties. So if you are scared about something not fitting, you can do something that ties so that all you have to do is just tie it a little bit tighter. But if you have a clasp, you're kind of stuck to the clasp if it's too small, but the closer to the show, the better. So like eight weeks out, make sure that you're already know what you're going to get because some of these online ones take a lot longer than that. So think about it as early as 16 weeks out, know what color you want, what design, what company you wanna go with. And then I would say like no later than eight weeks out, placing like the order because from the eight weeks out mark, then you have eight weeks to like shrink and get a little bit smaller and make maybe get a tie one that you can get and the bottoms are a little bit less flexible because it has to be like class, there can't be ties on the side. Lipstick, I have been obsessed with this. This is the Dior, um, I don't even know what it's called. Like it doesn't even have a name. It's the Dior Attic Stellar Shine. It's like a lip stick and a chapstick at the same time. So I just put this over it. It's like a corally color, of course, and I really like it. It's really moisturizing. I put a crap ton on. <laughs> Question number nine, any advice for people that want to compete in wellness? So I would say anybody that wants to compete in wellness, make sure that you are ready to compete. In oh my God, I found the brush I was looking for. You were in there the whole time. Wow. Anyways, anybody that wants to compete in wellness, I think a lot of people think if they have big legs that they're automatically gonna be good for the category, but there's a difference between having big legs and muscular legs. So once you cut down, that's when you really see how much muscle that you actually have because all of the body fat is gone. Oh my God, guys. Oh my God, my shoulders look so shredded right now. What? Anyway, sorry, distracted again. but. Take the time and actually build the muscle to fit into the category. But if you are really excited to compete, there's nothing wrong with starting in the bikini category first so that you can start putting on the muscle that you need and get a sense of what competing is like and then eventually transferring into the wellness category. So that would be my advice. Also finding a coach that's really good with wellness competitors and really tailor your training towards wellness. Like if you guys have been watching my videos a long time, you know that my training is tailored towards the wellness category. So it's very lower body focused and just touching the upper body, not getting it too muscular. So yeah. And this goes into the last question, which is, what is your workout split while on prep and is it different from improvement season? That's a really good question. So right now I would say Monday is legs, Tuesday is shoulders, Wednesday is a complete rest day or I'll just do yoga because I really need to be doing yoga once a week because when you lift weight so much, you just get so like stiff and yoga helps a lot. It also helps with posing. Thursday, 
If I am ready to train legs again, and I'm really focusing on recovery right now, then I'll train legs again. Friday, I'll do shoulders again and a little bit of back. And Saturday, I could either train legs again if I am ready, or I can just take another rest day, which I just have a hard time taking another rest day but I'll do like a full body day and then Sunday will be a complete rest day. So I have two complete rest days and then relatively two leg days, two upper body days, and then a full body day where I just kind of like touch a little bit of everything. It's kind of the same in my improvement season, honestly. I don't really change it that much. Um, I would say in the improvement season, I can handle a lot more leg days than in my prep season because I have more food, I have more energy, I'm recovering a lot better than right now where I have limited food, I'm doing like a lot of cardio and I'm working out. So I would say in the improvement season, I can hit it a lot harder, which is, you know, what improvement season is for versus now where I lose energy and that's what's starting to happen. Okay, here is the finished makeup look. This is what I have been doing lately. We got the orangey hues and the warm colors. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this new and updated get ready with me and questions, Q&A stuff. Thank you guys so much for being here. And as always, I love you all so much and you are more powerful than you think.